Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello, and welcome to Pop Turnative. This is the talk show and podcast where we have digital discussions, worlds of TV, film, news, sports, music, pop culture, everything really. Depending on the guests, we do talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Romoliotis. On social media, know me as PD Beats. My guest today is an actor. Soon you will recognize him in Disney Plus's Turner and Hooch coming out July 16th. Matt Hamilton is with us. Matt, welcome to Pop Turnative, man. Thank you. Thank you. Are, are you going to put in like a digital crowd cheering? Yeah, like woo. Like, like, yeah, that'd like, be, <laughs> if you do that in post, that'd be nice. Um, uh, thank you so thanks much. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, absolutely. It's always, I find, an exciting, interesting time when you do a project that's like an adaptation and based on something that already exists because there's like yeah. the nostalgia, but at the same time, it's a reimagining, right? What's that been like yeah. when you're working on a project like Turner and Hooch? Well, it, it's interesting because it's, it's, it's not quite, it's not like a reboot. Yeah. It's more of a continuation of the story. Mm-hmm. So that, that part is, is pretty cool because it's, uh, it takes place however years after it's, uh, Josh Peck plays uh, Tom Hanks's character's son. Nice. So it's kind of a continuation. And Reginald Val Johnson, who's in the movie, he reprises his role. So it's kind of in the same world. And it just kind of carries on with the same tone and, and kind of style as the movie did. What was it like working on a project like this? I mean, it's Disney Plus. People have found out yeah. about it. It was a big deal. They announced it when they announced a bunch of other projects. Yeah. And that was a big, that was yeah. a big day. Huge yeah. day. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, man, it was really cool because there wasn't like a lot of Disney brass around. So it wasn't like, oh my God, we're working on Disney and they're super strict or whatever. But it was a show that you're like, okay, they got some money to do stuff. Like a lot of times when you shoot in Vancouver, a lot of productions go outside of Vancouver yep. to like the suburbs because it's cheaper and there's better ways to do it. But we filmed. If everything that was outside the studio was like downtown Vancouver, because we got to, you know, it's got to make it look like San Francisco also. Yeah. But it was just like, oh, this is nice. I get to travel five minutes to my trailer <laughs> instead of driving an hour. This is the best. It was so fun. Absolutely. Um, what was it like kind of working with the cast and crew, Josh Peck? What was that whole experience like for you? Yeah. Well, the cast, the, this is probably the best experience I've, ha- I've had with the cast in terms of like, there weren't any assholes like at all in this production, which is really rare because, (laughs) you know, films like a, it's a, it's a tough thing. There's long days and early mornings and, and, you know, when I say asshole, like sometimes the person doesn't, isn't trying to be an asshole. He just had a tough day or, you you know what I mean? But that happens most of the time. I feel like most of the time, most of the time you're like, it's not personal. This guy's going for a lot of stuff. This guy's being a dick. (laughs) and whatever and he's from LA so he's used to big movies and now he's doing this one maybe he doesn't like it or I don't know whatever but it happens and it's a, it's a part of the course I mean there's assholes in every job right mm-hmm. but this was different everyone was like it started with like from Josh who's the, the main dude who was like the, the funniest chillest like compassionate dude that guy like barely had days off yeah and his days were long he was here with his uh, new family. A lot of dog. people say I look like him, by the way. I get that all the time. Oh, you no, no, no. You're way better looking than Jack Pack. <laughs> Literally, like, since, like, for, like, years now, he's, like, a yeah. double guy. I can see Everyone it. Everyone says. I can like, see it. I talk, even sometimes, like, yeah. I get, because, like, Drake and Josh, right? Like, he had some very, yeah. like, in, like, hand Animated. gestures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Absolutely. But it was, it, it, it sounds, it, it, it's it's funny because Disney Plus, with a lot of their like shows and movies, have been doing this strategy like the strategy where they're sprinkling, like they're sprinkling mm-hmm. stuff, right? Like you know, there's the announcement and the posters and everything, um, and like it's coming out July 16th. Um, we mm-hmm. saw a bit of a glimpse of like, the announcement that Josh Peck was going to be on it. Um, has it hit you though that it's finally going to be like coming out though? Like it's pretty oh, man. soon. Yeah, it's getting close. I'm so jacked for it. Like I want to see. I was actually talking to one of the producers today because I was like, "Hey, when did the trailer drop? Because can I watch it? I'm like, I just 
Like I've seen some stuff with just the ADR and stuff like that. And obviously I'm in it, but I just, man, I, I just, I'm so stoked for it. Absolutely. What can you yeah. tell us about spoilers? Like, what, like, what's your character all about? Like, what can you tell us about who you play? Yeah. So my character is uh, Trent Havelock, which is like the broiest name on the planet. And <laughs> TikTok I play star. like he, he has a TikTok, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, one hundred percent. And he he he's the uh, like super cop U.S. marshal, like kind of a douche. He's kind of a dick to the main dudes, um, but he's like serious, all about his business kind of thing. Um, but it's like, like he, he's a foil for kind of the main characters, but he's, it's like a friendly foil. Yeah. Like we're absolutely. on the same side, but I'm, you know, I'm kind of a pain in the ass for him. So you're, so yeah. obviously we'll watch the movie. We'll see. But like, what do you think about, cause it doesn't sound like you're, you're like playing the bad guy. You're, you're, you're playing someone no. like you said, was kind of like a jerk at times, but like, yeah. I'm just curious whether like if you have been like played the antagonist before or like from your friends that have played the antagonist, what do you think is so, cause I, every time I ask someone like, what's it like playing like the bad guy? They're yeah. like, Oh, it's a whole different dynamic. There's a prepping and getting into the character. Like, do you, can you yeah. speak to that a little bit? Like what's that? Like, is it just cause it's like a rush and your people are just like, not like you're playing something completely different because you're hoping that person's not the bad guy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, it's fun, man. Like playing unsavory characters is fun because you don't get to do it in real life. Well, I mean, I hope not. Uh, but yeah, so it, it, I mean, the key to the key to creating an interesting antagonist is uh, having rooting interest, where he may be bad, he may be doing some shitty things, but in his mind, he's not the bad guy, no. and that and that's important to realize. And his motives. Maybe good. Maybe he's, maybe, you know, he, or maybe they're not good, but you can empathize. Like Hans Gruber in Die Hard, he wants $300 million. Yeah. I get it. I also want $300 million. Um, but, and, and there's a way to do it where it's not just like, you don't have to have the, you know, have him kick a kid or a dog or something like that. Like, oh, he's the bad guy. He did something mean. The most interesting ones are more nuanced and it's like, uh, something that audiences can relate to where they go, Oh, I, I, you know, I went to high school with a guy like that. Yeah. And it's like, Oh, he was a real prick. He was a bully. And then, but why was he a bully? His stepfather beat him. Mm -hmm. And you know, he had a lot of so bad stories. It, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. No, I just, I always, cause like I, I did an interview recently. Like we did an email interview with like, um, someone who played a bad guy and he kind of said exactly like kind of what you said, you know, about a lot of the yeah. backstories and everything. Um, I'm just curious for you, Matt, um, in terms of acting and storytelling, um, when did that kind of all start for you? Like, was there something like, when was like that seed planted where you were kind of like, Hey, this is what I'm going to do. Was it at a young age or was it a little later on? Yeah. Well, I, well, I, I would do it at a young age, but I wouldn't like, I didn't know this is what, what I wanted to do. I, I remember being in like grade one, and I remember being out in my yard, acting out me being in class, but I was playing, but I wasn't me. I was playing like the cool kid in the class. Mm -hmm. I remember that in our front yard. It's super weird. Um, but, and so I, at a young age, I started, uh, I mean, I was a huge movie nerd and I loved watching movies. And then I was a writer too. So I'd write these short stories that in my mind were movies. Yeah. And it wasn't until university that I kind of put the two together in terms of screenwriting and stuff like that. But so I always, I, I acted in some like plays in middle school and things like that. And I was a little shy to be on like the, the high school stage. I didn't really want it. And also like, you know, high school politics comes in. It's like, is it cool to be, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which, which I wish, I, w I wish I would have done, done it. having looking back on it, but um, so at a young age, I had the desire to tell a story. Yep. Um, and it just kind of came to fruition late, later in life for me. Like, I didn't start acting really until uh, 10, like 11 years ago. What? 2009, 2010, around there. Yeah. No, absolutely. Like, yeah. I'm going to, you've been giving some very like, thorough, almost like philosophical I talk too much. answers. You can just say, no, no. I'm just yeah, saying, you're, you're going very like I always have when I do these interviews like five or six questions I could ask and I, I try to feel it out yeah. right like that's yeah. why like I have you have to like the way I do interviews like I gotta pay attention because yeah. of what so I'm gonna ask you because you know 
I feel like I'm going to get a good answer. Um, I always ask sometimes about misconceptions of the industry, right? Like everyone yeah. kind of thinks they know what you go through. You're on a show, you're doing this. Like they think they know everything, right? What can you tell me about like the, like the career of a storyteller? There's obvious ones, right? Like, oh, you haven't yeah. seen this guy before. He must just started. He's actually been yeah. doing it for 12 years, right? The yeah. money thing yeah, yeah. is a big one too. I mean, you can yeah. bring those up. That's fine. But are there other misconceptions? Like, oh, it's like this. You're like, no, it's completely like that. Like anything come to mind misconception wise? Um, well, one thing I've kind of learned that's a little bit different than maybe what you're expecting is sometimes you can be on something where the set feels terrible. Like there's an mm -hmm. asshole or everyone hates each other and they hate being there. And it's like, you get a shitty vibe and, whatever. And sometimes you can be on something that's super fun and great and everyone's awesome. Like, oh, that was a great time. It does, like filmmaking is so interesting. Like it doesn't necessarily translate to a good product, you know? Just because people are jerks and dicks and or, or maybe not people, pe people, people, <laughs> um, doesn't mean the movie's going to be bad or the, or the show is going to be bad and yeah. vice versa. Sometimes you can be on something where it's like, oh man, this is really fun. Everyone's Everybody the best. Really awesome. it's not <laughs> I can't wait to see it. And you watch it and you're like, hey, oh, I'm maybe not going to tweet about that one. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of interesting because inherently with movies, there's, you know, in three million moving pieces. Well, it's it's pretty crazy too, man, because I've been doing this for about five years, but like, I would say like, I've been doing Popternative, like, like pro I don't know what the proper word, properly, officially, but, like, we, we we started getting a lot of traction start of the pandemic. So, like, March 2020 yeah. is when I started to take it more seriously, right? And right. the more I'm doing these interviews of people like yourself, right, and you know how, like, you're a fan and you're like, oh, like, I watched the show, right? And you're like, oh, I yeah. hope it gets greenlit for season two, right? Yeah, I yeah. have more of an approach now because I, like, become friends with a lot of you and everything, and then it's not, like oh, he did this show and it got canceled. We're not going to see it. It's like my friends or like my guests like are out of a job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Amen. yeah, right? Like it's, yeah. it's, it's a whole different thing. Like it becomes more sad now when I find out shows are canceled. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a, it's a grind, right? To be like, you know, the dream is, well, I mean, the dream is to be like Brad Pitt and just like, oh, cool. I'm going to be in banger movie after banger movie. But, and make millions of dollars in the meantime. But I mean, the other dream is to like get be a series regular on a show where you go, okay, cool. It's going to go again next season. So then I have that year kind of planned. You don't have the what's next thing with acting where you're like, okay, that was fun. Shit. I can hang out for a couple months. Uh, I hope I get a job in that time. And then if you don't, you're like, okay, what am I going to do? That's why you see a lot of actors and stuff uh, bartending working in the service industry, which I did for a long time just because. It's easy to supplement your income that way. Absolutely. For you don't have... Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. For Turner and Hooch, are you um are you recurring? Are you main role? Are you guest star? I'm a recurring guest star. You're recurring guest star? Um yeah. that's also something too. Like there's all these different kind of like layers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. There's like recurring, recurring guest star, guest star. It's it's very odd. Do you find okay? So we got to bring this up. Like we're both big hockey fans. Um, yeah. Uh, it's. Do you ever think about the fact like your the the relationship between like sports and entertainment's always been there? But I what the thing yeah, yeah. I always love about it is like people like you are like big fans of hockey, right? And then yeah. there might be like an NHLer that just like watched you and Turner and Hooch was like, yo, that's sick. Yeah. Like, I love that. Guy. I love that. Yeah. Like tag team you know what i mean that's kind of cool too like the back and forth it's like the austin matthews justin beaver thing yeah or like, like the, two the, famous people their own thing and will arnett yeah. and Mish thing do you remember that that was yeah, cool yeah 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 <laughs> that was, the, everyone was so that was, kyle bukowskis who did that interview was yeah. a friend of mine and he said everyone was just both people like he's like you had starstruck from both ends like yeah, Will, right, Arnett, Will yeah, Arnett yeah. was like starstruck to see Mitch Marner, and Mitch Marner was starstruck yeah. to see Will Arnett. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I get. I mean, my bro my brother was a professional hockey player, so I kind of grew up around. Who's your brother? That culture. His name is Mike Hamilton. He didn't play in the NHL. He got drafted by the 
Atlanta Thrashers. Mm-hmm. And then he played play in, in the, the O or the, or the dub. He played in the BCJ. Then he played in uh, for University of Maine. Nice. The, for the Black Bears. And he won a, a Frozen Four. What year are we talking? Like, how, yeah. how long ago are we talking? He was drafted in 2003. And so he played in the American League. He won a Calder Cup with the Chicago Wolves. He played for... Did he play at Maine? Vegas? He didn't play Maine. So I'm trying to think because I remember like the reason why I always bring up Maine, Gustav Nyquist played for Maine. So I'm trying to think yeah. of like my brother played with uh, Dustin Penner, yeah, Teddy Purcell, okay. yeah, yeah, okay. Ben Bishop, Jimmy Howard, yeah. He played with he played with those those dudes. Mm. Um, Maine had like, like, great years of that. There was great years of that program. They're, they're yeah. a good team. Yeah, they were a good team for sure. Yeah, so I kind of grew up around that that culture, and a couple friends of mine played in the NHL, and and being from. Vic- Victoria, you know, there's a, a, you know, a group of Victoria people that play in the NHL and everyone be kind of comes friends with, you know, similar people, but yeah. it's fun being connected to that. It's cool too. Except I'm watching the hockey and Toronto loses and then I cry. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't bring it up. So you can't get mad at me. Like I didn't, I didn't say it. Can you, can you play that Snoopy music that plays in Michael <laughs> Blues? Uh, a George Michael walk. Yeah, but I promised you before we started, I wouldn't bring it up, and you just yeah. sewered me. I can't help that. it. I'm, I'm a glutton. I'm a glutton for punishment. What can I say? It's funny though because a Disney Plus connection, Mighty Ducks Game Changers. We've been doing interviews yeah. with a lot of like the new Mighty Ducks Game Changers characters, but we've been doing some interviews with the OG Ducks too. Yeah, like, we that's interviewed cool. like Marguerite Moreau, um, Matt Doherty played Averman, and Justin Wong yeah. played Ken Wu, and he's yeah. like Justin Wong's a dot. Like, he's a Die hard Canucks fan. Yeah. So it's like really cool to like see that, right? Where like the Canucks yeah. like grew up watching those movies. Like I, I, I just always love that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, he, then he feels the same kind of pain I feel right now. So, oh, I, all right. He, yeah. I mean, those Canuck fans are, there's, there's some good players coming up. So hopefully we'll, we'll, the, it'll be good for them. Um, a lot of teams have a lot of, Hockey is a very tough sport to play. Your brother could probably talk yeah, about well, it. <laughs> think about it. It's like, hey, we should play this game where we have to pass a puck around and shoot it and, and hit each other. But also, let's put knives on our feet. But it's also and like, your bro- like how many – Okay, so like you said you played like beer, beer league hockey. Have yeah, you played beer, you played beer league? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So how many times have you like watched someone play and you're like, this yeah. guy's like unreal – yeah, and yeah. then you find out you play like one junior game, and then like like hung him up. Yeah, yeah. That Man. happens. Like, <laughs> I remember there's a guy who played with Mike and uh, Michelle Le- Levelier, and I was like, this guy's going to the NHL. He's so yeah. good. He was yeah. so fast. He's a little bit undersized, but he was so good. And and he had a good career. Like he played professionally in Europe and mm-hmm. in the minor leagues and stuff. But he like he didn't get a. I don't think he got a sniff in the NHL. And it was just again one of those things. You're like. Oh yeah, that guy. That guy's going. But I'm so even sick. taking it a step like Oh yeah, further. yeah, we like, in beer league, yeah. Yeah, no, like you see guys in beer league that are like unbelievable division 1 and then you find out they just played like rec or like junior for yeah. a couple of years. Like that's to me is like insane. You know what I mean? Yeah. My old roommate uh played I think he played like junior B. I can't remember mm-hmm. what he played. Um but not not very long. And he's probably he like play. unreal, but he can like he does like the you know he can flip the puck on a stick and yeah. do all this shit and he's got sick hands and it's like that's a dude who was like he can do shit with the puck that's like and he was never even had not like even on NHL, the radar. Yeah, so far away, but he can still do. It blows shit your like mind that. though, right? Like I worked at a yeah. rink for like five years, so I see it. It's it, it blows your mind a little bit. Like it's crazy. Yeah. And then when you yeah. get a chance to play with some NHLers like Shinny. Or like yeah. OH others, it's like, oh my god, like what? Yeah, what am I doing tough. here? <laughs> I hate it. It's like they're firing passes that you can barely take, and and it's like, and, so, and then you're turning the puck over, and you're like, ah, I don't, I don't want to do this. And they're and they all like they're NHL gamers they're like, too, eh? Like they're into oh yeah, it. They're in. They're in. <laughs> yeah, they're not giving up on pucks. They're taking that from you. It's oh, crazy, yeah. Matt. Thank you so much for coming on Pop Turtle, man. I really enjoyed chatting with you, dude. Of course. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. So, uh, Turner and Hooch, July 16th, Disney Plus. Yes, sir. And people could follow you on Instagram to keep up to date with everything. Instagram and Twitter. I'm more, I'm more, 
I'm more on Instagram than I am on Twitter. Okay. Yeah. What's the so handle? Under, underscore Matt underscore Hammer. Amazing. Seriously. Yeah. This is awesome. Well, this has been Pop Turner, youtube.com slash Pop Turner for previous episodes. You're going to be able to catch Matt Hamilton and Turner and Hooch coming on July 16th on Disney+. Plus. Until next time, this is Matt Hamilton and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.